Behold the mistake of God. Christian real name Christine Weston Chandler. Formerly Christian Weston Chandler and Christopher Weston Chandler but more popularly known as that fat, retarded fuck. Be the 24th of February, 1982 age 36 is a fat, stupid, perverted, religious, autistic, basement dwelling, racist, homophobic, transgender, pedophile, self-proclaimed ex-virgin with rage. I never wanna hear I have a boyfriend. Tell me why I'm stuck as a virgin with rage. Manchild, and creator of his own skillfully written as well as skillfully drawn series of comics starring Sonic to his supremely retarded hybrid of Pikachu and Sonic the Hedgehog. The most notable physical characteristic of Chris, beyond the obvious corpulence, and his tranny operations that only succeeded in giving him a pair of pendulous man tits, is that he wears a medallion made out of Crayola fucking model magic and acrylic paint at all times in homage to his yellow Sonic Ray color, in public. As if that weren't lame enough. Chris Chan actually has a shitload of medallions. The Blacku and the Rosachu medallion which he planned on giving to his sweetheart, suggesting that he has far too much free time on his hands. Which, of course, he does, because who the fuck would sit around on their fat ass all day coloring in comic book pages if they had anything better to do with their lives. Eventually, after years of trolling, Chris began asking for donations from people to continue his projects. The hapless retards of the net idiotically thinking that sending Chris cash was milking the lol cow actually began complying with these requests and sending him upwards of 100 and calling it trolling. It seems that, in the end, Chris actually became the troll by milking countless dipshits out of their monies. This is why you shouldn't let your autistic children on the internet. The beginning. Chris. Chris. All alone he'll sit. Chris. Chris. Can't get noted. Rhyme made up by girls to taunt Chris in high school. Our journey begins in 2007 when Sonichu was first discovered on 4chan. Intrigued by what kind of feeble, autistic mind could create such a thing, the users track down Chris and all his associated online accounts. In response, Chris shrewdly decided to establish his lolcow status right away by posting a rambling video containing a wide variety of content such as why smoking and drinking are bad. How girls should use Transformers action figures to seduce boys, and in what would become extremely ironic years later how heterosexuality and binary gender roles are an absolute must. The video also confirmed his delusional status as he described it as educational and hoped it would be played in at least two schools. Throughout the entire video Chris proudly wears a sonnet necklace, which would eventually become well known as the unofficial sign of autism of the internet. Hello ladies and gentlemen. Girls and boys, and dudes of all teenagers, as well as the uh, gals. My name is Christian Chandler. I am here, and y'all are there. Now, among the better things you should definitely try before despising is some of the hobbies of those of your own opposite gender. Like, uh, for example, if you're a young gentleman, I recommend buying yourself a My Little Pony figure of your favorite color or whatever. And hopefully in due time or now, each and every one of you will stay straight. You know, girl for boy, boy for girl. Everything else is vice, as said by Dr. Kinsey. Not just for me, not for the big man upstairs, not for your family, but do it for uh, yourself and for, and for the benefits of everyone in the future. Your children, your children's children. And besides, if you stray away from the straight path, it can really jeopardize the entire future of the world and the human race. Also, girls and ladies, don't just go over Gaga over the handsome rich boys and men, because they may turn out to be disrespectful and distasteful in their personality. Christian Weston Chandler vs Encyclopedia Dramatica. Chris newly created the infamy, of course, drew the attention of Encyclopedia Dramatica and an article was promptly written about him. Chris discovered his article and decided to follow the same track he did with 4chan and confronting ED rather than simply ignoring it. At first, Chris tried tampering with his article while logged in as Rodnak which is obviously Chandler his last name spelled backwards. Before erasing the entire article, Chris actually contributed by adding information that he hadn't submitted anywhere else. Most of his additions were chunks of text from unsighted sources which included how Megan shattered his heart, and printouts of the Sonichu news dash. 
a shitty newsletter about his comic which he also distributed at PVCC that landed him in another apparent conflict with Mary Lee Walsh. To make matters worse, he also uploaded Rule 34 of his own characters. Later, when the context of the article finally dawned on Chris, he snapped. He created another account and tried blanking the page several times. CWC blames Encyclopedia Dramatica for breaking up the relationship between him and Megan despite the fact that she was never his girlfriend. Just another lying attempt to make ED feel trolls remorse. Chris then uploaded a video to YouTube in which he congratulated all of his non-existent Sonichu fans whom he mistakenly believed brought ED down and further urged them not to donate to ED while failing to realize that Ed's downtime was due to an issue related to the website as a whole and not related to any drama around his article. Chris plea for his fans to not donate to ED flop because the only people who pay any attention to Chris are precisely the ones who helped ED reach its donation goal on the 14th of August, 2008. Later, Chrissy would post yet another video to the tubes demanding that the page and discussion page be deleted, or else he wouldn't be making any more of his sweet, sweet comics for his 10 fans to enjoy. He then stated that much like the old adage too many cooks spoil the broth, Ed had too many crooks and that every single word on his ED page was a crook. After standing in an anime pose with his fist in the air, Chris then hulked the fuck out and proceeded to beat the shit out of a raggedy and doll with a picture of Clyde Cash taped to its face, and that more rage would follow if his ED page wasn't taken down post haste. The beast can be unleashed here or not, it has since been bala eated. Even Ulube.com doesn't want him on their site. You think I'm weak? You think I'm not tough? This is what happens when I'm intercepted. This is what will happen when I'm intercepted by a troll. Boy, hello, Christian. Uh, hello. What's the matter? You don't know me? No, should I? It's me, Clyde Cash. Oh. What the hell do you want, you son of a bitch? Oh, I just came by. To tell you how much of a son of a bitch, lazy yes, bigoted, fort treacherous rat you are. Mm. Oh, and how about that time I wrecked your sweet Australian panda bear? You son of a bitch! This, this, is for Sarah Cassandra McKenzie, you bastard! Watch your back, trolls! Chris Chan the former man, the in real life creepiness. Chris was born Christopher Weston Chandler in Charlottesville, Virginia and raised in Rutgersville, Virginia, diagnosed with autism as a young child. This diagnosis would prove itself true when he had his first name legally changed to Christian in 1994 after hearing a guy possibly a pedophile in a bear costume mispronounce it. An article in the local paper about the name change described the then 11 year old Chris social development as being that of a 7 or 8 year old it would never change from that point. Chris did. However, managed to graduate high school and even got an associate degree in computer-aided drafting and design from a local community college. Given the quality of his later work, it appears that Virginia Community Colleges actually baffle science by being somehow shittier than people would already believe a Virginia Community College to be. Aside from earning his associate's degree he did also earn his first ban as he got expelled for posting creepy as fuck posters that advertised for cute single 18-21 year old female companions with pictures of Sonichu on them and displaying his homophobia by also telling men seeing the sign to mind their own business. On MySpace, yes, this story begins a long time ago, Chris posted his quest for a boyfriend-free girl and his stalking tendencies. 
Unfortunately for him, every woman on the planet appears to have a boyfriend. This has led to what Chris dubs noviophobia in Chris's bastardized high school Spanish interpretation. He inserts novio which essentially means boyfriend, before the Greek root phobia. Committing a facipum worthy portmanteau that is almost nonsensical enough to make you forget that of all things in the world, Chris has a paralyzing fear of boyfriends. Chris claims to hate every male besides himself and his father, because they took all the pretty girls leaving him with no one to choose from. Where did it start? I started when my lifelong friend, Sarah Hammer, a very pretty girl, was taken away from me by this magician jerk, Wes I Sally. At first, I was naive about their relationship. Later on, in spring of 2003, I tried to pick up a girl in a class I was taking at Piedmont Virginia Community College, but she told me right off that she had a boyfriend. And it was like that with every other girl who I talked to since then. Thus, I developed my noviophobia mentioned above. Chris Chan spills the beans. I am a my age then year old, single male, seeking an 18 my age then year old, single female companion. Chris begins his search for a boyfriend free girl. As for Wes, I blame all of these happenings on him. If he had not taken my lifelong friend away from me, I might have a pretty girlfriend today, and I would not have had to set out on endeavoring love quest. Christian Weston Chant lies foiled in his perennial search for companionship. He employed his famous looking for a boyfriend free girl sign in two places the Fashion Square Shopping Center in Piedmont, Virginia Community College. The Dean, Mary Lee Walsh, reasonably assumed that Chris was publicly soliciting for sex had the sign destroyed and banned him from the school for a year. Since then, he has become obsessed with her and depicts her within his comic as a bald witch with a viking helmet, a pitchfork, a scepter to contain her evil anti-love powers, and occasionally a broomstick. We all know he fantasizes about having said broomstick in his ass, but that is another story. Chris has also shown his hatred towards Mary on several other occasions. He made a hilarious YouTube Favicon PNG video asking for fictional character Harvey Durdman's not Birdman assistance to fight that evil bitch Mary Lee Walsh. Hello, I hired Harvey Durdman, attorney in law, to help me, Christian Weston Chandler, and my case against Bernie Walsh, Harvey Durdman, In a contest for Adult Swim, he also made a video of him fighting Mary Lee Walsh as a custom character in Soul Calibur. Pirate. Now two souls are fiercely entangled. Wanna see my true strength? Let's see if you're ready for this. Battle 1. Fight. <laughs> Despite his hate for Walsh, he still took the time with his magic markers to make hideous porn of her, due to the fact that he secretly wants to diddle her poo hole. You know you want to see it. Chris's love quest was also foiled by security guards of Fashion Square Shopping Center. He was handcuffed and kicked out by jerk ops half jerk, half cops for trying to attract a boyfriend free girl. Christian claims to have started his ill-begotten love quest because he wants a daughter whom he will doubly call Crystal Weston Chandler apparently after the illustrious metal. He made her in the form of one of his My Little Pony figures from his own pubic hair, mind you, and made a separate file in the game Animal Crossing, and played as her. The person we know the most about is Megan Scroder who had a huge influence on the comic and Chris himself. She remarked that the antagonist of one of the Sailor Moon movies came off as kind of queer, possibly influencing Chris's homophobia. One example of the Chris induced drama is the blog entry where a girl describes her encounter with Chris as he was wandering stores in search of his true love in late 2004, which can be viewed here. Chris changes love interests far more frequently than he changes his underwear. It is speculated that he has fallen in true love around 50 times. Trolled in real life. Trolling of Chris Chan has crossed the OL border into IRL whether internet vigilantes are trying to expose him for the psycho stalker he really is or if they fap to picking on retards. It's uncertain. The game place, a store where he volunteered, was soon subject to his antics when Anon took several photos of him. See here for Chris Q Ching, an old classmate of Chris, Joshua Martinez, 
did some trolling. Chris knew him from his old school Joshua and Chris both had special ed together, recently met up with him again and was getting along fine. Apparently, Joshua was very popular with women and had met some famous celebrities. For some reason, Chris became extremely jealous and even tried to get ED to go after him. Note that Chris only values Joshua's friendship because he's popular with women, and that by being friends with him he might end up getting laid. Unfortunately for Chris, even other special education kids will fuck with him. The chick that Joshua was supposed to hook him up with was just Joshua trolling him with a picture of Vanessa Hudgens. Click here for Chris Chan unwittingly fapping to Joshua. A girl I rule pranked Chris on a fake date. Click here to see Chris Chan get taken down to 15%. Though trolling in this next case started online, it quickly moved into viral. Chris had started a relationship with an e-girlfriend called Blanca. On the 11th of September, 2008, another troll going by the same name was really a my gif black man in a pickle costume and managed to score horrific nudes. Warning don't look at it. On the 7th of October, 2008, Blanca managed to get the medallions and you draw them. Sun's in my heart, and I'm ready for love. Let the storm. Chris the Jailbird. The game place later known as Quickville's Hobbies, Games, and Toys and Defunct as of June 2014 was a comic, gaming, and hobby store located in Charlottesville, Virginia where Chris played Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, and other games that the DSM-5 officially lists as autism spectrum disorder symptoms. Chris was a regular for many years unfailing showing up wearing his Sonichu medallion where he became well known for scaring little kids. Throwing bitch fits when he lost which other regulars say was often, and threatening to fight other patrons who apparently did not simply beat his ass down because they found him too pathetic. It was also here that Chris was to meet the ill-fated Megan Scroder. Although he had received a temporary ban before, Chris eventually found himself permanent in 2008 after getting into a racist screaming match with a black patron. Despite intervention from his long-suffering mother, neither of them were able to convince manager Michael Snider to allow him back into the store. As it had worked so well in the past, Chris took to YouTube in 2009 to make a half-acid apology and begging to be let back into the store. Not surprisingly, the video failed to change any hearts or minds, not that its intended audience probably saw it anyway. Severe high-functioning autism speaks. Also, on another note, uh, I wish to apologize to Michael Snyder for that 
mistake I made over nine months ago that got me kicked out of the game place. I miss my fr I I miss my Friday nights over there, and I want and I wish to uh, come back. And, and also, in addition to that, y'all are the only place in town that has uh, eye judgment cards. So uh, please allow me back in. And uh, you have my phone number, so call me and let me know if I can come back. And also resume my uh, responsibilities of the Pokemon Lake. Definitely, that's a uh, big. That's the big input there. It's a big one. All right, take care. After years of relative quiet, Chris and his mother, Barbara (aka Snorlax), were arrested on the 28th of October 2011. Chris was charged with assault and trespassing at the game place, while Barbara, on top of that, was charged with hit and run after she attempted to run Michael Snider over in the parking lot the second time this has happened, before driving off. When Ma Barker and her thug life son were soon pulled over not far from the store, Barbara attempted to defend her precious child and was subsequently charged with assaulting an officer. Chris attempted to have charges dropped in court on 7 November. Although he apparently kept his mouth shut and didn't spurg out, he still received no mercy from the district attorney and not a single charge was dropped. We have no idea if he plead no low content dear. Guilty. Not guilty by reason of insanity or shut up. Judge it would turn out our hero, Michael Snider, allied for a civil trial against both Chris Tud and Snorlax. Chris returned to court on the 15th of December but fuck all happened. Apparently he whined to the judge that he'd only just gotten a lawyer and needed more time to prepare, and got a delay until the 5th of January. He brought his 3DS with him and Anons from CWC attending the hearing were able to obtain his street pass mini. Even that's a fucking Tom Gerald. On the 5th of January, he got yet another postponement, so he could finish leveling up some Pokemons in his game instead of going directly to jail. The court set a subsequent hearing date for the 5th of April 2012, with each of them facing a potential minimum sentence of 1 year and a maximum sentence of 10 years. The only way his get out of jail for free card could work to somewhat to his advantage would be due to this incident reeking of autistic fuck up and the court would find him incapable of functioning as a normal adult and therefore not responsible for his actions and would then commit him to a mental health facility, likely for most of his remaining adult life. As for Barbara, if the court found her guilty, it is likely the 70 year old wouldn't survive her prison sentence. Here's Christard's version, straight from the horse's ass. I tell about us two landing in jail. During a usual, yet tiring, shopping outing with my mother, we had just stopped at the Salvation Army story on Cherry Ave and left with a few purchases. She impulsively asked to go to the Spcar rummage sale, and I ended up taking four Saint NW to stop by the McDonald's there for a cup of tea to go, when at the place. Now known as Seville Game Hobby Status Unchanged on the place website, mom and I read the sign on the window that led me to an occurrence I was waiting for. The place under new ownership with burning it down being the alternative. So, I continue ahead for the tea, and mom asked for a smoothie. On an impulse of the newfound piece of freedom, I drove back to the place. Upon closer inspection, I read the new owner sign further, stating, under new ownership of Mike Madeline. I had thought, perhaps it was another Mike. Mom insisted on coming in with me, so we did, and a few steps in, who did our eyes see in the new center counter, past employee Nathan, and Michael Snider. I hid behind my mother for a moment, and Mike pointed us out the door, but before leaving, I whipped out my 3DS, activated its camera and took his photo, then I shouted, for the internet. Mom and I made our way to the van and entered it, Mike followed us out, and stood right in front of the van, thinking he was Stonewall Jackson. We backed up the van some, Mike chased us, mum took the wheel, Mike twice made his own deliberate leg scars, rubbing his legs on our bumper, banged our hood and fell backwards. We had not moved our van at either instance of him faking his falls, and more shit happened. Mum called 911 on my phone first followed shortly after by Mike being handed a phone by someone else for him to make his call. Eventually, mother backed us out onto 4 Saint NW, northward, and we escaped. But at the traffic light, we were caught up by a cop car, parked at the nearby courthouse. Two of the cop cars, and us in the van, exchanged the tales of the event and our driver licenses. Eventually, I was asked to step out of the van. I was about to be handcuffed, but I would not have another handcuffing. So I fought, I was pinned, and I was handcuffed. 
My new pair of 324RX lens glasses were broken by them in the fight. My mother fought the police in my defense, and she was handcuffed and I was emotionally distraught. I screamed and screamed and screamed, until an ambulance came for my mother to take her to Uva hospital. She was okay, but her blood pressure was high. I was driven to, entered and thrown into a cell block. At first for a while, I was as melodramatic and sane as Daria. Then I started going crazy. I shouted television talk and songs at random. Took off my shirt due to the heat. Pretended to be a genie with light brown hair for a while. And made an acquaintance with a stainless steel sink with a hex shaped bowl. I prayed a lot to Jesus for my release and safe return home with my mother. And I banged the cell door with both my feet while lying on a folding mattress on the floor to get those bastards to let me see and talk. To my mother eventually. My mother arrived, tried to post bail, but there were errors. Rocky was called to help us, bless her and her husband so much. Then my mother was jumpsuited and jailed. I was too shortly before. And I was moved to two other cells. Only after seeing my mother in her suit pass by my second cell, did I start to calm down. I was really worried about my mother and her health. She needed me, and I needed her. Eventually in cell 3, I dozed off and slept for a few hours. I did not eat their food. I had never eaten prison food, and I was not going to start then. About 3pm on the 29th, mom and I were released, and Rocky and her husband drove us back to our van. Now mom and I each have our own courthouse dates. I'm sure mom will be only fined, but I have the worst of cases. Mom and I, we are certain I will be found not guilty. It was a case of a deliberate deception, with the new ownership sign from Michael, and my falling for his trap. I later printed out the facts of Mike from the cookie that night, and I found the CWC Michael Snider interview video on YouTube, where the clown face troll called Mike. Michael Snider confesses to wanting to lure me in and land me in jail with a Pokemon tournament on the 22nd. Michael Snyder? Yes. Oh, well, hello. Um, well, this might sound a little weird, but I'm one of Chris's trolls, and I was wondering if I could do a little interview with you. Uh, well, I probably won't say too much, but I'll be glad to see what you have to ask. Oh, well, okay, well, um, Chris recently released a video stating that Green County must have influenced you to make up excuses to not let him in your store, quote-unquote, scaring your customers away. Scaring his customers away. Do you have any comment towards that? I am working on posting a comment on that video right now, but YouTube's, uh, doing maintenance, so I can't quite get it on there yet. Oh, well, what's your YouTube channel? Uh, the RC Holic. RC Holic. RC Holic. Awesome. As soon as YouTube stops their work, I will post my comment. <laughs> this is a special video. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, we can see from that. Actually, like the one somebody's modified it and has a baby crying and really sad music in the background while he's talking. I send this message to all the people that were of the Green County School Board and such during the 1990s because threatening to put me in a mental institution that was pretty much why we had to run away and move to Chesterfield County and I had fair life over there I had oh, I had so many friends over there Miss Brad? Yes! Give me a violin! That one I think just came up. Yeah. Hilarious, <laughs> dude. But yeah, yeah message, message from what would it be? We're having a Pokemon tournament on the 22nd. <laughs> <laughs> I sure hope he doesn't show up. That would really be bad. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh all you want, trolls. Because I don't give a damn. I have streamed from my PS3 to my laptop to get an MP4 of the video and to burn the video onto a DVDR. With this great amount of evidence, we will find Michael guilty of being a troll cyberbully among those who have been pestering, deceiving, tricking, blackmailing, etc. Me for about four years now. That's the story I share with you, redacted, in strictest confidence, do not tell, anyone, please, 
Do not ask, do not tell. Barbara and I are working diligently to deal with this. Currently, her court date is set on 12th of 15th. Mine is yet to be determined on 11th of 7th. But it'll probably be on the same day as my mother's. We have also been blessed with connections from Rocky at my church to have Robert B. Bell, Delegate, Republican, Methodist Esquire to represent Barbara and me in both of our cases. It may help to have you come in for support on my trial, and as a character witness, I will send you an update later on. Stay safe, redacted. Christian W. Chandler, The Verdict. Chris's pastoral counselor Rocky Bullwinkle Shoemaker revealed details of the Chandler's living conditions to a suave. British troll named Dr. Perrin who turns out to be notorious fundy creator troll Chris the Hacker. Apparently, not only is the Chandler resident a rubbish heap of hoarder junk, it is also suffering an undefined infestation problem and that bug bites are part of the reason the great lumberjack went off to that sawmill in the sky. He was even under quarantine immediately before his death. The charges for the trespassing and assault were eventually dropped. Michael, being extraordinarily magnanimous under the circumstances, managed to get the court to accept a plea bargain because he didn't want Chris or his mother to have felony charges on their record. Both the Chandlers plead guilty while still endorsing their version of events as the factual one to a reduced set of charges on the condition that they pay Michael's medical bills. Chris, gracious as ever, responded to the judge's question of whether or not he understood the terms and conditions of the plea bargain with. Yes, but I don't think that thieving liar deserves a red cent. Chris Chan, showing his gratitude. The grand jury in Chris case. Barbara and Chris were both sentenced to one year community service with Barb also getting two years probation and Chris getting one along with required mental health treatment with jail sentences. Being suspended as long as the terms of the plea deal were followed. Snigger was also awarded a permanent that is two year restraining order against Chris and also dropped his civil suit against the Chandler since the payment of his medical bills was already stipulated by the court as a requirement of the plea bargain. Chris, of course, responded to Snidder's generosity by posting reviews of Gameplace on Google under a million different sock puppets in which he called Snidder a registered sex offender, and complained that he discriminated against autistic people as well as creating flyers stating that Gameplace was where cyberbullies hang out and encouraging people to stay away. Keep it classy, Chris. Remember, Christed, keep your fat ass to the wall and bend with the knees, but we all know he's going to drop the soap on purpose. Chris assaults GameStop employee, or retard assaults employee to electric boogaloo. Don't call anybody. Battle Cree of Christian Weston Chandler. Attention everyone. To preface what has happened recently, I simply remind everyone that Sonic the Hedgehog's arms are not freaking blue. If hashtag Sega had never changed them, or reversed the change between February and November of this year in the new Sonic Boom video games and cartoon series on Cartoon Network, as well as the toys and whatever else, I would never have had to protest and rebel the way I have, including the creation of my group. Fix Sonic's arms immediately, Sega. Within my groups, I have led by example to push forward to the path of waking Sega up and forcing them to change Sonic's arm color back immediately. And to confess, I have done my part for real. I had personally gone into three of the four local gamestops excluding the fashion square one three times to personally protest in my silent way. First attack I printed, as seen on the Facebook group, the fronts of the Sonic Boom game inserts, affixed double sided tape onto the backs, and affixed them onto the fronts of their respective display game boxes on the shelves. Second attack, about a week later I checked the success of my first attack damaged a few original inserts pretty well to full removal. And of what was still there, I made attempts to transfer the inserts from the original cases into behind the inserts of different games. I've had to briefly explain my reasons in the protest, and told them that they should not be selling the blue on bandit games in the first place, and that they should send all of their remaining stock of Sonic Boom games and stuff back to Sega, to make them change Sonic's arm color back immediately. They did nothing. And one last week later, the third and final attack, and the one and only time that the Fashion Square location had been involved as well. I made up and printed faux price tag decals, with the short note to discourage purchase of the Blue Arm Bandit games, and promote the protesting boycott. And with the 5 Wii U software cases that each melted a bit from the My House fire last January, as well as 5 smoke damaged 3DS game cases no melting, I had printed a full front, side and back insert with the boycott encouragements, and the notes on the back to make the store send their remaining stock back to Sega. I have ran into individuals giving me bad grief for my protests and actions, outside from the fashion square location, 
but I have done my duty in full to the best of my abilities at the individual moments and circumstances. I also had hidden all of the blue armed sonic toys at Toys R Us here, concealed hidden amongst their air needle cupboards, so they all would not be sold, and best boycotted for the protest. They remained hidden for the longest time of over a month, found and reshelled near the 20th of December to my personal dismay and crestfall. And at Best Buy, all copies of their Sonic Boom games are still successfully concealed and hidden from view and purchase. Anyhow, after the final attack for the protest, near a week later, on the 8th of December, I had typed, signed, addressed and mailed apology letters, with the promise to have been done with my in-person protest deeds with no further action therein, to all but the fashion square messed up, and I had sent one to Toys R Us as well. I had thought the FSGS would overlook the one attack of protests on them, but obviously, I was mistaken. Which brings us up to now. Last Friday, the 26th, my mother and I were at the mall, getting pizza and spaghetti for lunch. She had informed me of a good mini refrigerator deal at Sears, so after eating, I made my way to check it out. Nothing else happened at Sears, and I went nowhere near Jt Penny that day. There was a good 3.1 cubic foot fridge for 129.99 that caught my eye, but that is to be purchased later. On the way to Sears, I peeked into the GameStop, and I spotted a new Skull under figure Blastermind. I was set to buy it, and I was going to consider checking out their Wii U pre r software selection in their 3 for 2 deal. Innocent, I was not looking for trouble. But then this male loomed out in front of me, frightened the crap out of me, and he said in a booming voice that only scared me worse, you are banned from here, you need to leave now, but still determined to continue my shopping, I veered into the Wii U direction, when his female accomplice startled me and boomed in as well. Still feeling frightened and mentally overloaded, I made a grab for my pepper spray to use in defense. I offered a few peaceful solutions, but she ended up sending him to go get security. So, I shouted, fine, I'm leaving, and I dropped the figure. And on my way out, I told the male to not get anyone, and we both stopped near simultaneous. I still felt my own worse and where with the fear, startle, paranoia, and I did not want him following me and causing more trouble upon me. And then in my defense and to make my escape, I spritzed a minuscule amount of the pepper spray downward, not into his face. And then I left. Don't call anybody. Oh, <laughs> I did not learn until much later that the spritz had done a lot worse than I had imagined it would, as well as learning that they were the so-called manager and ass manager of that particular store. I had no idea of the contents of the pepper spray, or that it was illegal for use in certain situations in the state of Virginia at all, and, I had tried the stuff on myself days before in the upstairs bathroom. A 2 second spray onto my left wrist, some of it got onto the bathtub wall as well. Like sampling a perfume or deodorant. It took me out damn well. I had to open the windows, turn on the bathroom fan and aim the box fan into the bathroom to air the place out, and I wiped the wall off as well, and of course I washed my hands. It took 15 to 30 minutes to make it bearable in there again. In the end, yes, I went along peacefully when the police arrived to collect me, and I had to spend a miserable weekend in jail. And I just got out on a bond and bail, yada yada yada, and I was a victim. I did not cause the original provoking. The assistant manager made the first attack onto me and provoked my defensive response. I was minding my own business, not looking for trouble, and then he startled me, similar to a potential rapist in a dark alley in a big city. Any of you would have done the same as I have in defense and escape. And we can sue Sega for changing Sonic's arm color and ultimately, this male getting pepper sprayed. Think about it seriously. And my protest actions are not acts of vandalism, regardless of your individual perceptions. It was not vandalism, but good protest when in around 2004, at Fashion Square, I tried their new soda machines with a credit debit card slot, and then I learned of the $5 surcharge that brought my bank account into the freaking red. I subtly posted sticky note signs onto each machine shortly after, this machine charges you $5 per card use. A few days later, the original machines returned. Nobody gave me any freaking grief or complaints at all about that. And if you really want to see the whole mess happen, go find the security tape of the time of point A, my finding blaster mind to point B of my departure from the store. Now, if you will excuse me, I have a lot of much required packing to take care of. Good day.
Chris expertly masks his butt that long enough for this mugshot. We'd like to remind everyone that this is what our autistic friend got arrested over. Sonic's arms are not blue, and they seriously cause sensory overloads in me. Sega needs to recall everything Sonic Boom and change Sonic's arm color back immediately. You mad bro. Throughout late fall and winter of 2014, Chris Tran now newly rechristened as Christine had been ranting incessantly about Sonic Boom being the worst thing to happen to the world since Michael Jackson became white. While Boom and all other things Sonic in the past 20 years do suck like a donkey taint rim job, he she's not mad at the game for any technical, gameplay, or artistic issues. The non-binary lol cow wonder is mad because Sonic's arms were changed from peach color to blue an aesthetic change so minor it wouldn't warrant a Tropers Tales discussion. By all rights, this shouldn't have even warranted a bit in this article, but our autistic hero went full Islamic state with the blue arms thing. He issued repeated calls for boycotts, violence, and terrorism on his Facebook page going on and on about sensory overload as if he even knows what those words mean individually. Things finally boiled over sometime around Christmas 2014 when he vandalized a local Sonic Boom display, harassing GameStop employees, and landing the faggiest pepper spray attack in the history of American criminal law on a random guy while leaving the store. All of this was caught on video. Chris was picked up by police a short time later sat in jail until his court date which was the 29th of December 2014 and charged with a 6th degree felony. His mom bailed him out. Chris returned to court on the 5th of February. His case was delayed until the 2nd of April, then again until the 7th of May, and then again until the 11th of June, then again until the 23rd of July, and then once more until the 15th of October. While we all wished that the courts would just find him guilty and imprison the fucker already, after 7 friggin hearings, Chris was eventually let off with just a few hundred dollars in fines and another suspended sentence on the stipulation that he won't violate his probation again. Chris gets permabanned from GameStop. Since the Macing incident Chris has been boring to the corporate office hoping to overturn his ban at the one store claiming at one point that it was transphobia. In an act of pure lulzy irony Gamestop told Chris that not only is he banned from that one store but statewide. We take the safety of our employees and customer base very seriously and believe that the precedent set by your previous behavior and the threatening tone of your letter towards one of our valued employees unfortunately indicates a higher likelihood of future conflict. I have enclosed a complete list of GameStop retail stores where you are no longer permitted entry for your convenience. Please be aware that our employees will be instructed to contact local law enforcement for immediate intervention if you should enter the premises at any of these locations. GameStop, telling Chris he is batchet insane. Chris isn't even good enough for Walmart. Chris, not smart enough to keep his aspy ass out of public while waiting for his day in court for the previous incident. Decided that two retailers wasn't enough and decided to add America's largest retailer Wimato Racer Mayala ban just one week after the GameStop incident. Chris would later brag about this in an online conversation in which he called himself a badass, yet clutched his tranny pearls when the manager asked him to leave. Once again he threatened the staff with pepper spray. When asked why he carries it, he claimed that he's constantly harassed by trolls, bullies, etc. Once again, it's everyone's fault except Chris. And it's highly doubtful that trolls are able to pepper spray anyone across the internet though if someone does figure out how to do that please leave detailed instructions on the TJC. Fragile feminine soul Chris Christine Chandler discussed the Walmart banishment in January 2015 during his annual State of the Christian Union address, in which he also revealed that he may possibly be also unwelcome at his local target, thus thankfully removing him from the only two locations Otis find potential mates aside from Comic Con. He feels only two offenses should result in automatic banishment. Threatening to mace employees should be forgivable if you're having a bad day, along with other things people typically do while having a bad day, such as perhaps urinating on the cantaloupes or attempting sexual acts with underage better fish. As far as we are aware, Chris Sage opinions on the topic of banishment have yet to persuade these two multi-billion dollar corporations. Chris Chan's virginity lost? On the 12th of April, 2012, the PVCC troll group posted a flurry of screenshots. They were of a redacted Facebook posting supposedly from the Christed boasting of him sticking his bent duck into some poontang which has already been proven physically impossible unless the hooker was a hambeast and then giving a gift basket to the prostitute. Oh, I forgot to mention, she really enjoyed my dick, it was so big and good that it put the last dude she was with to shame, her words. Christian Weston Chandler, 
of note is that Mr. Chandler has committed another crime, since the solicitation of prostitution is illegal in Virginia. Call up the Chandler house today, and tell him porking a blow up doll doesn't count. Either Chris lied or lost his virginity to a hooker. Neither are things worth bragging about. Farm Zombie sums up this whole sad excuse for a saga. Yes, folks, that's what Chris has been reduced to. You'd think that if he knew he was about to go to jail, he'd nut up and do something interesting. But no, Chris will go out with a whimper, without even getting to bang. Smug gasp to this mug. You trolls got served. Coming out of the closet. I am a lesbian identified man and a cross dressing tranny my mother is still old fashioned and putting me down on how other people would perceive me in short skirt getting away discreetly in a short skirt recently I received multiple compliments from the woman. I wish she would ease up on me and let me have my freedom to flirt skirt. Let me get this straight. Chris is a woman trapped in a man's body but that woman is a lesbian and so he's still attracted to women? Then why all the desire for a sex change? Doesn't he already have the source of a lesbian's envy? Why does he want to cut it off and only have sex toys to play with? Hargiba. This is what bull dykes with broken cocks look like. Just a tub of whale shit with perpetually flaccid penis a severe mud butt and there you go. One of God's unique beautiful creatures evolving. On the 16th of August, 2014, Chris comes out as a lesbian identified male, making him one of countless sufferers of trolling induced transsexuality syndrome. This means he thinks he was meant to be born in a woman's body, rather than the fat autistic man-child body he currently inhabits. He goes on to say he hates all penises, including his own. Time will only tell if Chris will save up his tugboat and get the surgeries needed to become a woman. He also states that Snorlax is not supportive of his decision to come out as gay, but he doesn't care. What a badass. For a 32 year old to disagree with his mother, he's likely still spooning with her every night, though. Hashtag Jesus Charlie. Hashtag Jesus Charlie or hashtag I am Charlie. For those who don't speak Frog is a short lived fad, obviously started by some soap dodger that watched Kirk Douglas in Spartacus too many times. That Chris got involved in to impress his artiste friends on Twitter and Facebook even going so far as putting a French flag mask over his picture after the 7. January 2015 killing of 12 people at the French satirical magazine Charlie Hebdo by pissed off Muslim. Hold a thought. The irony of Chris' involvement is that he didn't understand it was one defending the inalienable right of free speech when he has demanded the takedown of the satirical website Encyclopedia. Dramatica. Blocked so many people on his accounts for saying things he doesn't like and especially when he has announced that he wants to silence people like gay males because he opposes their life choices. Despite being autistic he is okay with lesbianism so there is some hope for him. I will admit that Chris may have learned his lesson about free speech because on July of 2017 he made a donation to the legal fund for Encyclopedia Dramatica. Hashtag I stand with Doopy. At Doopy Doover is a darling sweet soul and a great artist lost of love for Doopy every day. Chris came out of another closet when he stood in solidarity with his man crush. Thai lady boy Dupido over by openly declaring his love of animated child porn when he climbed on board the hashtag wagon to make Dupi feel better because he was playing the drama queen and whining all over the internet that he was depressed and might become a hero because people were calling him a pedophile and a sick fuck for doing drawings of kids having sex with adults. Like all the other retards that signed up for this idiot fest that can only be described as a monkey trying to fuck a football or Chris Chan making sweet sweet love to his PS3. Chris and everyone else were too fucking lazy and do a simple google search to see that it is in fact illegal choosing to believe in much the same way that has defined Chris past. That the law is their toy and bends to their whims of what they think should be right or wrong in the current circumstance. The vagina. T has been reported that at some point in 2015, Christine got a piercing in the area between his arsehole and nutsack, which is possibly the most unholy, godforsaken demon infested strip of matter aside from hell itself. According to Chris Internet Research, lesbians engage in a practice known as scissoring where they rub their clitorises together, and being a male identified lesbian, 
Chris wanted the piercing so he could use it with a future lesbian lover. As usual, Chris paid no care to his personal hygiene, which resulted in the pierced area getting infected. A friend possibly a troll suggested he remove the piercing and let it heal, and the sore supposedly evolved into a flesh hole which in Chris Chan's warped mind resembles a vagina. Chris is under the impression that the hole is a result of white noise videos on YouTube, which Chris listens to since he believes it can aid in his transformation into a true and honest woman. When trolls told Chris to seek medical attention, he lied about already having visited a doctor for his new vagina, with Chris claiming that the doctors told him that his vagina is good and beautiful. In truth, this is a combination of circumstances which may ultimately kill Chris. In the event that the puss pocket which is likely embedded deep within Chris has stated that he has been wearing maxi pads in order to contain the bleeding his cursed hole tunnels deep enough into his taint to reach his digestive system, he will suffer a septic shock which is shit being released directly into the bloodstream. If Chris suffers a septic shock, he will likely die. Last for cock. The 10th of January, 2014 house fire. In the early days of 2014, 14 Branchland Court was burned down by a fire sparked by plugging a coffee brewer into a bathroom outlet at 3am and leaving it unattended, heating the hoard to its flashpoint. The entire property, along with all of Chris's earthly possessions were destroyed. It begs the question why Chris was brewing coffee at 3 in the morning, although likely reasons would be due to his biological clock. Or that Chris is obviously trying to commit fraud and sue the coffee maker Keurig. Or perhaps that Chris likes a nice warm cup of hot java after taking a shit in the middle of the night. One firefighter was seriously injured, probably because Chris kept going back inside to find his sonature medallion. The roof. The roof. The roof is on fire. We don't need no water. Let the Mathefica burn. Burn Mathefica. Burn. Chris's neighbor. Green County investigators are looking into the cause of a house fire early this morning. It started at about 3 o'clock this morning at a home on Branchland Court. That's in the southern part of the county. We're told the fire started in a first floor bathroom but got quickly out of control and eventually shot through the roof. Everybody inside was able to get out safely, but one firefighter suffered minor injuries. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. Back to the present. Today, Chris for wanders around Virginia, buying things with the money people sent him because that's trolling him, somehow. While complete losers snap pictures of him like their paparazzi snapping pictures of Caitlyn Jenner fucking Taylor Swift. Still existing, somehow, is the Chris Chan wiki which obsessively that is pathetically follows every detail of Chris and his mother as if they're still or, more accurately, were ever worth more than a single wiki page. They also ask for donations in order to keep the stalking possible. The sad end to all of this turns out not to actually be Chris, but rather anyone who would spend money to keep watching him or his mother's fucking credit rating. In the end, he became the troll. People actually follow this shemel around, seriously. Christian Weston Chandler vs The Donald. On November 10, 2016, Chris, who only supported Hillary Clinton because she was a woman, has threatened to assassinate President-elect Trump and VP-elect Mike Pence on Twitter. Seriously, he was threatening to kill them on social media before he pussied out and deleted the original tweet, only to post two more threats aimed at both the president and the vice president. Chris has also made many YouTube videos talking about Trump and denouncing his presidency. People of YouTube and around the world, the bad news has come in. The unnamed elect has been sworn in along with his cohort who is filling the vice presidential condition. And as far as I am concerned, I hereby state that as long as Pence and Trump are in the White House whatsoever on this note, I do not validate, I do not entertain, and I do not acknowledge either of them at all as president and vice president. We have lewd Decepticon perpetrators in the seats.
and as I do not acknowledge either of them in the White House, I hereby decree this country has no president. I repeat, as long as Trump and Pence are in the office, this country does not have a president or vice president, period. And we will have to wait four years with a vacant seat in the presidential White Off House and in the presidential vice president office. This is indeed a very sad day for this country. And that is how I feel about it. And it will not be changed until Trump leaves the White House and takes Pence with him, or at this point, when they are both deceased. And then we could actually have Hillary Clinton in office, and this country would be a whole lot better. E-begging. On Chris' new YouTube account Cookville Guardian, Chris has begun to e-beg. Most of these videos include Chris talking about how the mortgage company is biting our butts again. Hello people of the internet. Christine Chandler coming to you live from home once again. Hmm, our mortgage company's biting our butts once again. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to scrounge up enough, scrounge up the money locally, but we sure could use a lot more help. So... I mean, I am very thankful for all the kind donations that I have received from y'all within the past uh, year and greater. More than a year. Long time. Well, a few years. But we really could use, use some more help now. So, just what you can send to me via PayPal. Please. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Chris also has a Patreon account where he usually racks up a total of 537 a month. Chris being Chris, he and his mother began to accumulate quite a bit of debt and the e-begging became Gee. more and more desperate. With the corpse like Barb even appearing in some of the begging videos. We are in need of donations for food. Please. Consider us Thank you In April 2017 after unsuccessfully trying to sell stamp albums and getting frustrated Chris did his sonic totem on eBay and it was bought for 1500 almost immediately Chris spent 400 on a 14 karat gold necklace to replace one his mother owned and the rest went to Skylanders shirts and to pay off a few bills in typical Chris fashion, he had spent all of the money without shipping the item and the buyer had disputed the charge on PayPal, putting Chris' account in the negative and Chris then begged for more money so he could ship it. Chris did finally send out the totem and the buyer surfaced on 4chan V and provided photos of his 1500 paper mache horror, reporting that Chris had mailed it in two boxes scotch taped together with trash used as packing material, inspired by the sale of the totem. Weeks later Chris dug through 20 damp garbage bags of clothing that had been festering since the 2014 house fire and managed to find his classic shirt so he could attempt to sell it. I previously stated that I lost the iconic shirt in the house fire of the 10th of January 2017. Actually, that shirt was not totally lost in that fire. To my recollection, it was in a mountain pile of laundry in the laundry room. So, more accurately, it was in one of the black bags down here. I have just dug through the dirty half of those bags, more than 10 or 20 of them. Then, in a bag of damp ones, I found the shirt. I took a photo, part of the selling amount will go to better restoring the shirt. I am personally putting it through a page or two in my washer and dryer. Only after sale of the relic, I will be able to afford having it restored to its glory, and I will frame it and add a personal certificate of authenticity, before shipping it. Thank you. Chris value for his moldy, ratty shirt. 20,000.
Chris did the shirt on eBay with a 12,000 starting bid and a buyout price of 20,000. A portion of the winning bid was said to be going towards restoration of the shirt and putting it in a frame after he got the money from the sale. Chris wore the classic shirt and his medallion in a follow-up video about the sale, seen below. Once again, and today we are doing our captain's log, so yeah, captain's log, star date, 0419-2017. We have resurrected this old antique, the very same shirt that you've seen me wear in the comics, as uh, shown between these two, at least uh, to make it to prove my point. Becoming a little whore. Anyone living locally to me in Virginia or visiting in Charlottesville I'll give you all blowy jazz for money too serious. Chris Chan's plan to support the troops on 9-11. Tomorrow on 9-11 I will be handing out free blow jobs and hand jobs to gay army vets in celebration of the fallen towers. Most efficient way to troll Chris. Since our little untermensch ignores reality and all his failings and actually believes that he is the ubermensch that the Nazis Nietzsche prophesized. The easiest way to troll him is to tell him that whatever he is doing sucks, he will never be any good at it and that you saw you do it a lot better than him. In other words, tell him the truth. Like a vampire being exposed to the sun, basement dwelling, autistic, fuckers react the same when exposed to the truth but instead of being reduced to ash, they're turned into a blubbering pile of failure that will whine how everyone hates them because they were born different. Chris Chan has superpowers. Recently, everyone's favorite virgin with rage from Virginia has become convinced that his autism comes with superpowers and has made posts on Twitter suggesting that he was endowed with a level of hearing that our simple mortal minds and weak, fragile human bodies could never come to understand. Chris has made the claim that his senses are so acute, or at least his hearing, that he can hear a whispered conversation being held across a room in a noisy environment. For him, an unimpressive ability that can be replicated with a directional microphone is something to brag about. Some people think that this is the beginning of his break from reality and that he will be claiming more powers that belong to Superman until he climbs to the top of a 30-story building and tries to fly. Considering how fragile Chris' psyche is, this is just another attempt by him to convince himself that he is somehow special or better than everyone because he has a special skill that no one else has. The post is probably meant more for him as it is published in some form of semi-permanent media to convince him that it is true rather than for the people who follow him. The 23rd of June, 2018 The ban from Two Mena Games. While at the Two Mena Games convention at the Greater Philadelphia Expo Center, our fellow manchild of bad odor Chris Chan, thinking she is some sort of goddess, decided to touch people inappropriately. She even kissed Shane also known as Fourscore64 without his consent yeah that actually happened. And when she was kicked out, she made a whole scene about it. 10 years of getting banned from dozens of local stores and getting rejected by women for his creepy behavior has taught him fuck all. Thank you. Well, it was something. Fuck. Like, you know, it's it's hard to, like, get into Chris Chan. I don't know really where to start or, like, you know, really, I don't really understand what he's all about. Like, I don't really understand Chris Chan and I'm a bit of a, I would like to think I'm a bit of a Chris Chan historian. I think I've got to the point where I've watched every single fucking video there is about Chris Chan, so I thought, fuck it, I might as well make one myself. Although this is just a copy straight from Encyclopedia Dramatica, it is possibly one of the best places to start. Now, I haven't covered everything. Um, I'll definitely, this will be part one. I'll be going back and, like, you know, there's so much I've missed. Like, you know, for instance, like, you know, Liquid fucking Chris and, you know, the, uh, Blue Spike. Um, Blue Spike stuff's pretty rough, by the way. Like, you know, I'm, I, I think I fall into the camp of I more feel... Like, yeah, a lot of these problems that Chris have is his own fault. But I can't help but feel sorry for him sometimes. Like, you know, he's just, he's just got the tism. And he's just got it really bad. And like, you know, he just, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Chris is just an odd character. And like, you know, he's hard to really explain. So I think like, you know, if you're new to Chris Chan, 
Um, I hope this has helped explain him to you. Um, if you're already familiar with Chris Chan, I hope you find this entertaining him. Um, fuck, I don't really know what else to put on it. Um, this will also be, I'm going to be continuing, I'll do a part two. Like, you know, any bits that I've missed out or anything that is worthy of really going more into, I'll definitely look into. Like, you know, I, I, I love Chris. Like, you know, I, I'm really into him. Like, you know, I don't know why. I really don't, to be honest with you. Um, he's, he's a curiosity, he's a fucking oddity put it nicely so i don't know when the next part will be out but i'll see how this is received and we'll just work from there you know what i mean um as always um like subscribe all that other good shit and um, check out the discord we've got a thriving community piss goblins i fucking love them they're a lot of fun definitely worth checking out and uh i'll see you in the next video if you haven't already check out my red bubble portfolio you might just find something you like this this is, is not okay this needs to stop now, this is cancer. This, this is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's weighing down heavy on me, and it's not okay. Can you help a nigga out and just stop this, please?